Today I'm going to lead you through a safety huddle on the point of care assessment uh, for transfer. So thank you for joining me today. My name is Brooke. I am the Quality Assurance and Educator Support Manager with Safe Care BC. And I'm excited to be delivering this safety huddle today as your huddle leader. If you're watching live, I would love to know where you're watching from today. Um, if you can please post it in the comments box of this video, um, I'd love to get a sense of where people are joining us from. So again, I wanted to welcome you uh, to this safety huddle. I'm your safety leader, um, your huddle leader, Brooke. And today we're gonna be focusing on the point of care assessment for transfers. So if you haven't attended a safety huddle before, this is usually a short meeting that's held at the start of a shift, and it typically focuses on hazards and risks in the workplace. Um, and so safety huddles are really a great way to engage staff in relevant and timely conversations about health and safety. For this huddle, we're gonna be talking about the point of care assessment for transfers. This assessment involves a series of questions, informal questions that you can ask yourself um, to assess whether a person's ability matches what's in their care plan. So as you're getting ready to do a transfer and during a transfer, you're able to ask these questions to see whether or not the person, uh, their abilities match what's in the um, care plan. Okay, so I wanna make clear that this does not replace any sort of typical risk assessment completed as part of the person's care plan. Um, this is rather a tool that you can use in addition to a care plan. This is informal that you can do in the moment. So it's important to do this informal check-in every time that you're supporting somebody. Because as we know, people's abilities can change from day to day, also from hour to hour. So a person who maybe could do a minimal assist in the morning by afternoon may not be able to do that anymore because of changes. So it's important that we do this every single time that you're supporting somebody in a transfer. So we're gonna start our huddle. And so huddle, the way it typically goes is you have your huddle leader and then you have a group of staff. And typically you start with uh, a particular concept, an idea, something that you're going to discuss. And then um, you go through either a scenario or discussion question so that the group can really interact together and discuss the topic. So we're going to go through the point of care assessment for transfers. I'm gonna explain what it's all about. And then we're going to do a scenario together. And it, I'd love to get your feedback any time during today. Please feel free to um, send me your comments, send me your questions, and I'll answer them um, as soon as I can. Okay, so let me know if you can see this. Uh, if you can, give me a thumbs up or write in the comments. Let me know if you're having trouble seeing this graphic here. And if you're looking for a copy of this, you can find it on our website. Uh, we're going to post that for you. Uh, we'll get the link up in the comments section there so that you can see um, where to find this. You can download it. You can find more information about it as well. Okay, so let's jump in. So this is the point of care assessment for transfers. And this is how we assess risk when transferring somebody. Um, and so this, these are the questions that you'd wanna be asking yourself from these four categories when you're going to uh, provide that kind of support. So the first category here is person in care. Um, so first you're asking things like, what am I seeing, what am I hearing? What kind of cues is the person giving me that might indicate that there is a potential risk? Is the person ready for the care that I'm going to provide? Great question to always ask. And then can they follow my direction? Can they lean forward sitting? Can they lift their buttocks off the bed? Can they step or shuffle? If these are things that a person can typically do and you're noticing all of a sudden that they can't, that's a sign that there is a potential risk there and you may need to adapt the plan. You may need to talk to a supervisor or somebody about how to approach this transfer with this person. The next category is environment. So first of all, is the area safe? Is there a way that you can lessen the hazards in the area? Perhaps there's a trip hazard, for instance. And then you wanna ask, is this the right height for my task? So for instance, if you're moving somebody from a bed, is the bed at the correct height so that you can perform this task safely for you and for the individual? We'd also ask things like, is there a risk of the bed or the chair moving while completing my task? So ensuring that the equipment is stable for you to use it. 
And then do you have the space necessary? And do you have what's needed? And finally, is it easy to get help? So if you've started to complete a task and you're continuously doing this point of care assessment for transfers and you identify, wait a minute, something's changed, something's shifted and I need support, are you able to get that support in a timely manner um, so that you can complete the task successfully? We're going to move on to the task now. So does this task need to be completed right now in the moment? And in a lot of cases, the answer might be no. Um, you also want to check the care plan. So has there been a change in the care plan? Perhaps you've been away from work for a few days, or even you've been on a day shift, the night shift has come in, and now we're back to day shift, and something could have changed in that nighttime. So always checking the care plan, really, really important. And then finally, do I understand the task? So is there anything in there that's unclear? Is there anything that you need support with, um, you need a better understanding of in order to do it successfully? And finally, we go to yourself. So when doing this assessment, it's really important to note, am I settled? Do I feel focused or do I feel rushed? Um, because it will be a lot easier to assess the risk if you're able to focus on the task versus feeling rushed and trying to be task oriented. So this one is really important to ensure that uh, for your safety and for the individual's safety that you are feeling settled. Um, so you're asking, am I settled? Can I do the task safely? Am I focused? Am I rushing? And is my positioning correct? And it's a lot easier to do that once you're, all, you're settled and focused. So that's the tool. If you have any questions about the tool, please do comment in the comment box. Be happy to answer any questions about the tool and how it works. And again, these, you know, these questions are things that you're going to be asking yourself internally. You're not necessarily saying them out loud, but these might give you the opportunity to ask the resident question, to ask um, your fellow staff members questions. So for instance, um, is the person ready? If you're identifying the person might not be ready, you might want to ask the person questions um, to sort of get a, an understanding of where they're at and if they're comfortable with you providing that support right now. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a scenario. So I'm going to read you a scenario and what I'd like you to do as I'm reading is just keep in mind the different questions that you'd ask here. And while I'm reading, if something stands out to you where you think, you know what, there's a risk involved here, let me know in the comments and then I'll get to those comments after reading the scenario. So please do write in. Okay, here we go. Mr. W's care plan says that he is usually very social and uses a walker to get around. It's almost dinner time and you enter his room to help him to the dining room. He is resting in his bed with the curtains closed and lights off. After greeting him, you ask what he did today and he tells you that he had a physiotherapy session this morning. When you get closer, you can see that he is still in his pajamas and that his walker is at the foot of the bed. Okay, there's our scenario. So while I'm waiting for a couple of comments to come in, I'll go through one possible risk factor that I can see right from the get-go here. The person in care, so Mr. W, is he ready, as I was just talking about, is he ready for the care that he's about to receive? In this case, perhaps not, because Mr. W is in bed, his lights are off, the curtains are closed, and this isn't, you know, it sounds like if he's a pretty social person that this maybe isn't typical behavior for him. So it sounds like in this case, there might be some follow-up questions that we could ask Mr. W before starting to do the transfer to see if he is indeed ready for this care that we're about to support him with. Okay. Another one here that we have would be in the environment. So, is the area safe? It's really hard to assess if the area is safe if we can't see the area. And in this case, with the lights off, that would be very challenging. And so the first thing we might want to do is flick on the lights, open the curtains, um, to be able to assess the environment successfully. And when doing so, we might be able to see that uh, Mr. W's walker has been placed at the end of the bed. And that could be a reason why maybe he's still in bed, he hasn't gotten up yet, because he's not able to access his walker. 
So that's something that we might uh, consider too as we're assessing the risk before helping to transfer Mr. W. Okay, another possible uh, risk here that I think we could identify is the task. So does this task need to be done right now? Perhaps not. Dinner is an important meal of the day, but Mr. W, perhaps he went out with his daughter for lunch and he had a really big meal. Or perhaps he's just not feeling well and doesn't want to eat dinner tonight. Or maybe he'd like to have his meal in his room tonight. So a couple of different things that could be happening here. And so there might be a risk in trying to support Mr. W with a transfer when he's not, he's not ready perhaps and the task doesn't really need to be done right now. So some possible probing questions here that could happen for Mr. W and also maybe some opportunity to check the care plan, see what's going on with Mr. W, um, but that would certainly could potentially pose a risk. Okay, and in the last box here, we might consider, am I rushing? So it's dinner time, that tends to be a really busy time of the day. Um, a lot of care tasks to do, a lot of people to get to the dining room. So this might be an opportunity to just step back and consider, am I rushing this task? Can I slow down in order to recognize all of these different questions that I need to be asking myself to ensure that you know, the person is being um, supported appropriately and to ensure that I'm safe and they're safe. Okay. So once we're done assessing, and it sounds like, you know, we've, we've considered a couple of different options here. Um, at that time, we're gonna try to determine, is it safe to proceed with care? And in this case, if I'm able to address everything that's come up and it's safe to proceed care, with care, then I can go ahead and I do. But if I've determined that I just, I can't proceed because something in this risk assessment has made me think, mm -mm, I shouldn't provide care at this time, then it's important to stop. Um, in this case, you know, what should we do? Well, one of the things that we can do is do the task later. If Mr. W isn't ready for care in this moment, um, if I'm not settled in this moment, if there are hazards that I can't alleviate in this moment, then it's important to stop and figure out another plan. Um, and so that may be asking for help, that may be informing somebody that, you know, there's been a change, maybe Mr. W can no longer list, lift his buttocks off the bed, so I'd want to be telling somebody and I'd want to be making another plan. Um, so talking to my supervisor, finding another way to support Mr. W. Okay, well that's great. Um, so I wanted to let you know that we are currently developing a brand new safety huddle handbook, which focuses on topics just like this one. Um, and they're used by huddle leaders to lead these kind of discussions with staff. And so to keep informed about the release date, and we're really excited about this new tool because it's gonna be fantastic, um, please sign up for the Safe Care BC newsletter. That's how you're going to find out information on the tool release, that's how you're going to find a copy of this video if you want to watch it again or share it with colleagues. Um, please sign up for the Safe Care BC newsletter to get that information. We will post the link in the comments section for you. So I want to thank everyone so, so much for being here today, for joining us. I hope this was helpful for you um, and I hope you enjoy a great rest of the day. Take care.